Quick mention for Lissandra Martinez. He's missed a large percentage of the season through injury. Comes back, performs well, gets injured again. We're hearing mm. for roughly eight weeks. How big a miss is he going to be? He's a massive loss for them, you know, because Varane hasn't actually been great this season. Maguire obviously has had his troubles as well, but he's been getting back in the side. But Martin Martinez is a player who they really kind of rely on at the back. He's a he's a leader, and they've lacked leaders this season, Manchester United. And I think. You know, him getting injured again just shows that there's, they've got some problems. And, you know, other players have got to step up. You know, you've seen Luke Shaw play centre-half this season, which is not ideal. So they have really struggled in that position. And I think Ollie Watkins today will be looking at Maguire and Varane thinking, there's goals here for me. Oh, well, I, I actually think Maguire gets a lot of bad press. I, I, and, and I think that's more to do with the 90 million he went for. You know, their results and the, 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 the fact that they've picked up Man United has been since Maguire's been back in the team. I think he's a, it, it, it's, you know, and I, th I think as a player, for me, if the manager plays a left back at centre back, of course it's going to, do you know what I mean? I'd have knocked on his door and said, listen, I'm going. Mm. And that's what he should have done. But Maguire said, no, I'm going to stay here, I'm going to fight for my place. And he's come back and played very, very well for, for Manchester United. It's, it's, it's sad to lose Martinez because he gives you that balance, you know, and he, and he likes that ten He likes the right footer on the right side, the left footer as a centre back, and it gives you that balance. Varane's, I said when they took Varane at the time, his legs had gone. Yeah. You know, to, and to be fair, you, we was talking about it. Rashford for me was really poor in the second half. He stopped running, he gave up, and he wasn't helping his team out because it was all Aston Villa. They were going at it, they were playing on the front foot, creating chances. I can't believe they didn't get their noses in front, really, and it was only down to poor finishing. But we was talking about it, discussing it. If you watched Rashford, he just was walking around, he was strolling, he had to make a change. Because in them moments there, when you're playing for Man United, you know, and the chips are down and you're up against it, you need, you need players who are going to work hard for the team. You need players who are going to defend and put their bodies on the line for him. And it was just too many times I was watching him strolling about Adam and it was really disappointing to watch. And, you know, in the end, he had to take him off and he took him off and he puts on Scott McTominay who's actually going to do something for the team. And it's all all right playing when, when things are going well for you, you know, and, and you want to do... And, and you're at home and you're flying and the fans are on your side. And, but, you know, when you've got to work hard... It, <laughs> Colton you know, agree with me on this. I just thought it was actually a really poor performance from him in the second half. He I, let I his teammates I down. I, I think something's up. And I, I, I've said that for a while since he signed his new contract. Uh, he just doesn't seem like the Marcus Rashford. I don't see him with a smile on his face. I don't see him enjoying his football as he was doing last, last season. Um, the, the manager made a good call. Um, he, had to, he, had to take, he had to take him off because they were under the cosh. I mean, uh, listen... As a neutral watching the game, I don't support either side. Uh, Man United got away with one today. I think they defended very, very well, and we've seen that with Harry Maguire. I thought they did a very steady game for Manchester United. But Villa absolutely dominated the game, um, conceded a goal from a set piece that would be disappointed, but they didn't take their chances. And for the life of me, I'd like to understand why he took Bailey off. He, he, you know, OK, maybe his end product wasn't the best today, but he was lively, he was causing plenty of problems yeah. for Manchester United. And as soon as he made those sub the substitution to take Bailey off, um, they lost that uh, mm. attacking prowess they had, they, you know, that cutting edge that they had going forward. But Villa will look at that game in the cold <laughs> light of the day and say, we cannot afford to not take the chances we had. They had good chances today. Ollie Watkins get across, he makes a good run, but straight at the keeper. OK, the keeper has made two or three good saves, but they've had good chances today that they've not converted and it's cost them. We'll look at their chances in a moment, but I want to know your thoughts on Michael Rashford. I mean, if everybody's fit, is he a guaranteed starter for Manchester United? Because he can have one good game and he has had a few recently. But for every one good game, he gets slated for about yeah. 10 over performances. I think what's strange is, you know, he had the off the field problem um, a few weeks ago, comes back into the team, scores the first goal in the game, back to sort of 
where you, you expect to see him at, but then no consistency. You see him today, he's getting the ball, he's getting a few megs, he's running with it, and then you don't do the hard yards, tracking back. And when you play against a team like Aston Villa, who are, who are at it, everyone's at 100%, the wingers are chasing back. If you've got that one player that isn't, look what you've done, Ten Hag. Mm. You might be the star player, but you're coming off. Who comes on? Who scores the winner? So at least now Marcus Rashford must know that, you know what, I'm not guaranteed to be the superstar even, you know, if he's, he's, even if he's one of the highest it doesn't paid players. It, it, it shouldn't matter doesn't, because you know, you know what it is as well? Just, he might think to himself, I am the superstar Manchester United, but Manchester United can't afford to have that. They got rid of Ronaldo. You know, they can't afford to have one superstar who does, that, doesn't but, have to do the running. But mm. Gabby, that's not like Marcus. Something's wrong. I'm telling what you now, if you, if, you, if you look at the pictures last season when he was playing, he was playing with a smile on his face. There is something wrong since he signed that new contract at the club. I don't know what's going on. Uh, obviously, there's friction between him and the manager. Mm. There's got to be friction between him and the manager. Um, Marcus has but, never but, been wait, over wait, his why career. Why is that? Well, if, if Ten Hag continues to pick him, because we've seen Ten Hag not <laughs> being afraid to drop players or even sell players when he has an issue with them. But yeah, he's well, continuing he, to play Rashford. They've got to continue to play him. They've just given him a five-year contract. Well, then it does come down to an extent to money then as well. Well, well, well of course it does with players. Of course it does. But we, if you look at Marsh, Marcus Rashford last season, he was playing with a smile on his face. This season, you, you, you go up back over the so years the with Marcus, mm. you don't see him getting in trouble for disciplinary no. things, being in a nightclub. He's not a drinker, he's Marcus. No. I know that. So him being out on a Wednesday night or Thursday night, that's... It's not Marcus Rashford. So something is clearly wrong within I, the football club with him. And I don't think Klopp would start him. He wouldn't have it from him. Pep wouldn't have it. Uno Emery wouldn't have it. Mm. De Zerbi wouldn't have it. There's so many managers who will say, you know what? He's got the talent, but you're not, you're not putting the hard yards in. Come sit next to me. Yeah. And they will get rid of him, you know? And yes, you can be on crazy money, but work hard for the side and something's wrong. Mm. We don't know what it is, something is wrong with him. I look at Marcus Rashford and I think, you know, he's got so much ability, world-class talent. And I, I just wonder, you know, is he going to get to a point in his career where he looks back and says, should have done more that season, could have done more that season, I've let myself down there. Because when I watch him play, and the reason he gets picked is because he's, he's got unbelievable ability. He can win you a game out his, of nothing. His numbers last year. His numbers example. are there, you know, and, and, he, and when you watch him play, he can glide with a ball. He, yeah. can, he knows where the net is. You know, he's got world-class talent. But when you see his, his body language and, and his facial expressions when he's on a pitch this season, it just doesn't look like he's enjoying playing for Manchester United. And it is an absolute honour to be out on a football pitch, to be a superstar for Manchester United. And I look at him and think, you're strolling, you're walking around. Are you going to look back in three or four years' time and say, I should have done more? And that's what I worry about yeah. with him because I think he's not doing enough. He's not fulfilling the potential yes. that he's got. You look, I mean, at, it, you look at Kevin De Bruyne so far. You look at Kevin De Bruyne and Haaland. Rashford should be one of the best players in the league. It was only a few years ago, we're looking at Mbappe. Everyone was saying, look at what he does like Mbappe a little bit. His speed, mm. left foot, right foot, he can finish any, any way, free kicks. But now all of a sudden it's like, he's in a comfort zone. Is that long-term contract? put you in a comfort zone, mm. it can happen. I think he might go. Uh, there's all this talk about uh, PSG. Yeah, I think he might no. go. No, I think he might go. There's a lot of talk with mm. PSG. No. Uh, if he continues to be... To Would perform... you sell him, Carlton, if you were 10 Well, well if, 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 first of all, as a manager, if I was manager of the football club, I don't think he would be in that position he would because I would have got him in now, I'd have sat him down and said, right, listen, and what, what, what's happened here? Because you're not playing with a smile on your face and that's not like you. He's not, if you look back at the years, you don't see Marcus Rashford getting into trouble at Man United for disciplinary problems. He doesn't, he's not a drinker, so I know that for a fact and he's a really good kid. Right? So we're not talking about somebody who's a bad egg or anything like this. It comes from humble beginnings. So something has happened with, uh, with the manager while he's performing and acting the but way he is. But why do you keep here. saying the manager? We, we don't know. There, it could, no, be, something, an issue. It an could issue. be something personal in his life. Well, well I, know, I, know, I, know, I know previously, I think it was the Everton game, that somebody had said his best friend had got killed. And so... Um, he was a bit down in the dumps and things. So whether it's something personally off the field, we don't know. But something is clearly wrong with Marcus. Mm. But, but look what happened with the off the field problem. Puts him straight in against Wolves and he scores. 
So the manager's like sort of back at it. Most managers will say, you know what? Your punishment might be two games, you're not even going to start. Yeah. Mm. He puts him straight in. So what can be the problem oh, when he's, when he's mm. continuing to play him, even if he's having them disciplinary problems? Because I, I, he's got world-class talent. Mm. They need him. Mm.